Hi. How y'all doing? Ready, ready, ready. Come on, we already in the chat. Half of y'all already know what to do. I'm seeing a few likes. If you're new to the stream, this is the game we play. I don't ask you to subscribe. You can subscribe when you're ready, at the end when you know if it's something you want to subscribe to. But if you're already here, do me a favor, go ahead and look. Don't lick it. No, don't. Nobody lick the like button. But if you can click the like button, that would be very helpful for me. Um, yes, she said, come on, ponytail. This is my uh, state trooper um, because I didn't do anything else to my hair. So congratulations. Um, my friend would call this the slick back white girl edition. <laughs> Y'all, it's going to be a crazy night. You know why? Because I still don't know what we're talking about. Still, it's it's happening. It's happening right now. And we're st I'm still not sure. So we are going to pray that the Holy Spirit does what only he can do. Because uh, I've had a a rough and tough day but also like a really great day in the same way y'all know how it is walking with jesus sometimes like your hardest days are your best days you know like the the most frustrating days also have like the most beautiful moments of worship and then so you kind of feel bad for complaining about having an off day because your off day brought you closer to his heart i don't know it's like upside down come on Come on, come on, come on. Um, well, you know what? Without further ado, let's just jump in because I am just as excited as you tonight <laughs> to see where this is going to go. I was like, Lord, are we going to talk about the woman at the well? Silence. Um, are we going to talk about the way that you reveal yourself in multiple scriptures? Silence. Are we going to talk about offense? Silence. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we've, talked about talking about so like him and i have talked about talking about here uh but usually he just kind of steps on a you know he steps on one in particular and he's like this and then he'll reveal something else about it like that and then he comes with a couple confirmations and that's just not the case it's not the case this week so we are all excited and i do ask that if you were on this video or that you're on this stream or even you know even if you are catching it on the replay after this stream is is done still throw up a prayer to the lord on high and because i could use it <laughs> truly i could use it one cool thing i will tell you about today is i got an opportunity to got connected okay so because of this platform because of my attempt to be obedient to the lord and this whole youtube channel came and then this podcast came for someone who doesn't like podcasts it's really amazing and it's incredible uh, but because of all these little moving parts that the Lord has had his hand in, I have been connected with this group of fiery, burning one women in Europe. And there's some men in there, so let me, let me say that. Some people, some sons and daughters of Christ that are like on the front lines and they are hitting the streets, evangelizing, they're telling people about the gospel. It is beautiful. And little old me from this little tiny town, North Carolina, is, I don't even know what it is. I, we're, we're, we're praying together. We're strategizing together. We're just coming together and letting the Lord do what he does. And it's just incredible. Uh, so that is a highlight of my day is that I got to meet via Zoom some really incredible people that the Lord has called out of some crazy things and he has protected in some crazy ways like there are some testimonies that i heard today y'all that'll be like no way it literally blows your mind at how good god is so let's jump in and let's see where the lord wants to take this thing this evening <sighs> spirit of the living god i thank you I thank you that from the foundations of the earth you knew that this night was coming and you knew how concerned I would be that I didn't know exactly what it is that you want me to speak on or about or the conversation that 
I felt like you wanted to have, Lord, you know my nervousness. You know um, how much warfare it has taken to hit this live button today and to not cower out and to just leave it and say, you know what, it's easier if I don't obey today because this is too much and I don't want this. And all of the things that you have heard me say as I cried to you, Lord, but yet you are faithful. And because you are who you say you are, I can trust that I can show up and that you will show up and you will meet us here, Lord, because these people, they do not come here for me, Father. They come for you, Holy Spirit. And so I pray, Lord, that you come into this time. I invite you into this time, this stream, this 15 minutes or an hour or however long you want to do this tonight, Lord. I just, I say, have your way, God, uh, less of me. I will get out of your way. Father, I just invite your Holy Spirit to take over, to, to saturate the stream and the airwaves and, and, and anoint my mouth to say whatever it is that you give me, Lord. Your word says that if I open my mouth wide, you will fill it, Lord. And so I am. I am taking that all the way to the bank tonight, Lord. I am here and I will open my mouth, Lord, and I trust that you will fill it, that your spirit will give me exactly what it is that I'm supposed to say when I'm supposed to say it, Lord. You have confounded my intelligence today, Lord. You have challenged so much of my thinking, Father, and so I'm looking forward to whatever it is that you have prepared for us this evening, Lord. I pray that you anoint my lips and my tongue, Lord, but even more, anoint their ears to hear whatever it is that you have prepared for them and to receive it in a way that only you can have them receive it, Lord. I thank you, I love you, and I trust you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, guys, congratulations. That is the end of my preparation. <laughs> Whew. All right. Where's Frankie at tonight? Anybody, anybody here from Frankie? Uh, where's my dumbbells and coffee? I really want to know how to say her name, by the way. My heart is beating like 17,000 beats per minute. Well, I guess probably not that fast because that would be <laughs> probably deadly i don't know donna in the chat would have to tell me if that would be deadly uh you want to know cool we were able to ship some merch to indiana and obviously north carolina but uh what i'm so excited so people are gonna be repping their book god stuff this week and i'm so 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 stoked so if you haven't, go check out the website, thebookgodpod.com. I worked really hard on it. And even if you don't want anything there, that's great. Uh, just just go look at it. You know, I'm like a kid. I drew a picture. I want you to see it. So there, go see my website picture that I drew. So I, I considered talking about offenses. I considered talking about the woman at the whale. Um, because these are, these are all things <laughs> people drop and they said, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm not the fan. Okay. Praise. Um, well, you know what? Uh, apparently their prayer was vulnerable. So maybe I'll just get even more vulnerable with you and just take you through my time with Jesus this afternoon because it was revealed to me with some conviction today that my desire to understand, but not only my desire to understand, but my entitlement to understand is getting in the way of some things. Somebody told me today that I'm like a hammer in God's hand. But then he also, say, man, he said, uh, at the moment hey dumbbells and coffee in the chat ladies and gentlemen uh you haven't really missed much except the fact that i have no idea what i'm really talking about tonight so pray for your girl praise praise the lord and oh well maybe i did because we were going somewhere so same man who told me i was like a hammer in the hand of god also told me that there was a boldness on me that i couldn't see or something to that tune and I'm just over here praying for boldness. I'm constantly praying for boldness. And I'm like, but I'm scared and I don't feel it. And 
and I don't know what's happening most days. But a little bit ago, a few hours ago, I was just worshiping with the music all the way up and my neighbor's neighbors could probably hear it sounded like a concert happening over here because there was a little sound upgrade that happened in the living room this weekend and we blessed the Lord for that. I just went berserk earlier. It was incredible. I was yelling at the top of my lungs and I couldn't even hear me for the music. So we blessed the Lord for provision. So that was nice. So nice. So I get to pray at the top of my lungs and everything, it's just drowned out. Um, and so I was in worship, kind of led me into prayer. And I was just going in because I was freaking out, if I'm being real. I, I, I think we've, we've covered this before. I have a tendency to want to control things. And this has been one of those things where I can't control it. In fact, the more that I try, the harder this is to do. So this project, this platform, this podcast, it requires levels of dependence on God and obedience that I'm not comfortable with, honestly. And so it's his grace. It's the power that he gives me to do these things and to walk this out. And today was no different. So while I was ugly crying in worship, being like, oh, why haven't you told me what to say or do or does this mean I should cancel the live? I almost canceled the live. Good friend said, don't do that. I really don't feel like that's what you're saying. But it's like, should I cancel it? You always give me something and this, that, and the other. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just laying it bare before the Lord. And on that call I was on earlier today, someone messaged me um, from the chat and said to, that she just felt like the Lord really wanted me to uh, meditate on Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six, which is very well-known scriptures. It's a uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Easier said than done. Okay. Uh, but then verse six says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Now, my biggest takeaway from this phone call with these European wild ones is their heart for people is beautiful. They're so compassionate on the unreached or the people who have this thing against God already. Um, and in, in community, like I had in the community, in the community that I was pulled out of by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and their heart for them is just so, it's so sweet. It's so kind. It's so loving. And I'm over here scratching my head and I'm like, Lord, like, what am, what am I doing wrong? Because I just want to roll up and say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, you know, repent. That's my real, that's my really only message. Like you, you shouldn't do that. That's going to, that's going to prevent you from eternity. Repent. That's, that's really the only thing that I know. And yet I'm, I'm listening to these people pray for these people that they haven't met yet. And it's, it's beautiful and it's convicting and it is confronting me in a major way. And so this, this lady or this sweet girl, she literally sends me, these scriptures. And she was like, I just feel like the Lord wants you to meditate on them. And so I am doing that while crying, while worshiping earlier. All right, now you're called up. And so I actually go to the beginning of uh, chapter three while the music is blaring and I'm just yelling this out. And chapter three, verse one says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandment for length of days and years of life and peace. They will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bone. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. So that is uh, Proverbs chapter three, verse one through 12. Frankie's in the chat, y'all. We are in 
Proverbs chapter 3, and I didn't know what I was talking about tonight, but this is where we're at, so you're called up. I'm so glad you're here. One o'clock in the UK, you ladies and gentlemen. That's just so wild to me. Hm. Wow. So I was told or instructed or I don't know what the word is. I wasn't instructed. I wasn't told. I was encouraged. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was encouraged to meditate on three chapter three, verse five and six. And so I'm, I'm in worship. I'm screaming this at the top of my lungs because, you know, I'm trying to make sure the Lord hears me because I'm clearly having a whole existential crisis this afternoon. And I go back to, I just, I keep reading it over and over again, but then I got, I got tripped, y'all. I got tripped on, hey, Nance, that's so cool. Hey, chat, everybody say hey to Miss Kay for me. The Lord used Miss Kay mightily a few weeks ago with my little heart. Ooh, I was given a new piece of information that really tested a lot of the healing that I had walked through and a lot of the therapy that I had, um, that I have also gone through. And I tell you what, uh, the Lord, ooh, the Lord used, used her in a major way to speak directly to the heart that was just broken in that conversation that I had literally just walked up out of in the split second. So maybe this episode, I'm just going to testify to how amazing God is and how he's brought people into my life that really make me scratch my head and say, how in the world does a girl get this so blessed? Truly. Uh, but yeah, so he is so good. He truly is. Wow. Praise, praise, praise. All right. Well, I'm getting jacked. This is exciting. Anyway, so I'm in Proverbs chapter three and verse one. I had read it a few times and I'm still, I'm still looking at me. I'm still looking inwardly and I'm like, God, oh, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? And like, why is it my heart? You know, why is it? Why don't I feel about people the way that they feel about people? Why don't I have this compassion? Why don't I have this empathy? Is something wrong with me? Did you not make me that way? Is that not the grace you have on my life? I was just, you know, spiraling. Y'all ever spiral in, in, in prayer and in worship? You ever spiral and you're just like, Lord, everything is wrong and I don't know how to fix it. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that was me. That was me. That was me. So, but I got tripped on number one. Y'all ready? It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. My, my belly is just, it just flipped right then because the Lord said, now slow it down, Terry, slow it down and read it again. My son, I keep saying my daughter because obviously I'm a daughter, but so my child, do not forget my teaching, but now see this podcast is called, but God, and there's a whole breakdown we could do about that because, but was a, but that phrase, but. I love you, but it's something I literally had to walk out healing from because of how perverted my way of thinking was as, when I was living as a le lesbian. And that's what people would say, like, I love you, but. And so I was like, I heard Dr. Phil that day uh, when I was young, you know, when Dr. Phil came on at nine and the doctors came on at 10, I was laying in my bed because see, I had to be up by 10. That was a house rule and or be out the bed, you know, uh, and I heard Dr. Phil say. You know, when we say a sentence that says something, I love you, but, and then we continue on, whatever's after that, but really cancels out the first part. And so I had believed wrong. I'm going to get back to that in a second. I'm so sorry. I had believed all of those years that when, uh, when somebody would tell me, I love you, but I wish you dressed like a normal girl, or I love you, but I don't know why you try so hard to be ugly. Or I love you, but I just can't do this. I can't accept that. I can't do this, that, and the other. I just was like, well, Dr. Phil said, as if I listened to anything else Dr. Phil had ever said. But it just, it's something that burnt on my heart. And then when I came to Jesus, because with the people in my life, I was like, you don't actually mean it. I love you, but so you're canceling out the I love you. That's like, it was like the way I heard it. It was like, I would love you if you were this way. I would love you if this wasn't a thing, right? I hope you are tracking with me. But then in the Bible, as you can see, this podcast is called, but God. And so what I love about getting into his word and getting to know him is that in the natural, in 
the realm where you and I are and we're like, you know, flesh people, we have flesh suits and we like talk to each other. That can be a negative connotation. I love you, but meaning I would love you if, but then in the Bible, it's a promise. <laughs> you, you, you have so many situations where, where because you see, but God, it was like, you were one way. I was destitute, I think. I don't know if that's a word. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit. I don't actually know what that word means. And if I'm using it wrong, forgive me, everybody. Um, I was a whole mess. I was such as some were some, such were some of you. So, but God, Ephesians uh, 2, 3 through 5, you know, in the, in the disgustingness of our flesh, but God being rich in mercy but God, but God. And so I love you, but was quickly come after coming to Jesus. It was quickly replaced. It wasn't no longer a point of pain for me, but instead it was a promise from God. It was like, you were a lot of things, but God. And so I want to encourage you with that. If you've been in situations or you have maybe uh, relationships that are not the best that they could be, and maybe it is because of walking something out in the LGBT community. I know that that teen, tends to put some pressure on relationships, especially when we're trying to balance, uh, you know, Jesus, the Bible, Christianity with these identity crises. So I just want to encourage you that what the, what the, in the, in our humanity where but God seems like fighting words, the beauty of God, he literally restores. And for me, this, this podcast and this phrase, but God, it is a, it's him renewing, it's him restoring even something that pained me for so long. So we praise the Lord. That was a whole tangent. We bless the Lord, but God is now hope filled statement. Whereas before I felt like it was a hate filled statement. And so that just tells you right there what it looks like to me and you when, when we're talking about God, when we're talking about Jesus, yeah, what our experiences cannot be compared to his promises. He just, they, apples and oranges, ladies and gentlemen, apples and oranges. Anyway, so back to Proverbs chapter three, verse one, my child, my son, my daughter, insert whatever you want there. Do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. And so mind you, I was like, um, guys, actually I wasn't like, well, maybe you know, God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, all of them. If we had a meeting guys, <laughs> um, what, what's wrong with me? Like, what am I doing wrong? Why don't I have this empathy or this compassion? Why do I just want to show up to the thing, grab the mic, yell, repent, and then run away? You know, like it, where is my expression of God's heart? Is it repent? Because that is a, that is an expression of God's heart too. And not everybody has this like coddling, nurturing part of them. That's not what everybody's grace is. I get it. But I'm like, Lord, I do feel like there is something, there's something missing. And he revealed to me from verse one, what it was. And I had to read it probably 80 times, maybe until I really was able to like set it in. And I still don't, I'm not arrived. I have not arrived to what he revealed to me earlier. And I, I pray that when I wake up in the morning, it's supernaturally done, but I would imagine that this is going to have to be something that I have to keep bringing to him until that regeneration is complete because it says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandment. And so in this, it was very clear eventually at that, there are two necessary things that we must do when trying to walk out this life. And grace is the power that gives us the ability to live holy. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the Holy Spirit can tell you in that moment what you ought to say. So he gives us the ability to, uh, to, what's the word I'm looking for, Holy Spirit? Literally. To articulate um, what it is that he is telling us. His spirit, it says the Bible, will, he will lead us into all truth. And so there are so many things that the Holy Spirit himself has taught me. He said, there's, you have no need that anyone should teach you anything because the Holy Spirit will teach you. 
And so in 3.1, it says, do not forget my teaching. And so let me just, let me just give it to you the way that I felt it come down from heaven today. He said, Terry, I do not want you to ignore what you have learned, but you need to let your heart keep my commandments. Meaning I need you to literally keep my commandments from a place of love. I need your obedience to be coming out of your heart and stop trying to serve me intellectually. Stop trying to understand what it is that you're doing and let this come out of your heart. And so, of course, naturally, I'm like, well, God, that's great. Because see, it says, but, which means we need both. And so he was like, look, we have, we have, unfortunately, we have people on both sides of this. We have people who, who refuse to forget the teaching. They are very much aware of the teaching, but it's all here, right? And he was like, this is legalism. This is when you try with your might and your mind to do what I have told you to do. Yes. All right. We're all there. Now, on the second part of this sentence, but let your heart keep my commandments. And so then we know what is the greatest commandment. Jesus said, well, to love the Lord God, withdraw your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And a second like it is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so on the flip side of this, we have people who lead with love, but forget his teaching. This makes sense. And so he's like, so that we, if we lead, if we just do the love part, but we don't actually keep his teaching, then we're, we're over here in hyper grace land where nobody's obedient and, and if you, those who obey get eternal life. And so there's like this, this tension that we're not very good at holding right now. And I'm, I'm the worst of them. I'm the worst of them. Cause he's like, Terry, you are literally trying to, you are trying to make compassion come from your intelligence. And he said, that's not how it works. That's your heart. But I was like, Lord, hold the phone. But you tell me in Jeremiah that you can't trust my heart. My trust, my heart is deceitful. It's sick. And who can trust it? He said, yes, your heart. Before me. Without me. When we say, you know, like, let Jesus come into your heart. Yeah. Um, he actually has to come in and live there so that what so that your heart literally gets renewed and restored. It's not just my life. It's just not my expression of my sexuality. It needs to be purified. He's like, no, your heart, Terry, needs to be purified because I need you to keep and remember what I have taught you, but I need you to keep my commandments from a place of love. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if this lands anywhere for you in the slightest. But I'm going to tell you what, it changed my life. And so naturally, I was like, all right, Lord, well, how do I do that? Because I don't feel like that's something I could do because I feel like if I could do it intellectually, I already would have. And, you know, I've heard people say, like, this is the, this is the big, this 18 inches from the getting it from your head to your heart is like, if you can get it from your head to your heart, you got it. And I was like, but Lord, I need to know. I need to know how to do it because I, I would if I could do it in my own strength, I can guarantee you I would have already done it. If there was a, a, a Bible verse in this book that said, all right, now do A, B, and C in order to open up the pathway from what you know in your mind to how you move from your heart, I would have done it. Guarantee you. And he was like, mm -hmm, no. And he's like, so we have things that block it. I'm open. Yeah, but are you willing to give me, I tell him all the time, like, search my heart, oh God. He's like, yeah, I'm searching, but I need you to understand that the place that these need to come out of is actually the space between. Like, I can read all of the scriptures. I can do all of the laws. Not every, you know, it says not everything is unlawful, but not everything is helpful. He said, you can do it. You can obey. You can, man, you can check the Check the boxes, Terry. You can do it all well. But if you're missing this part, you're not going to do it in a way that I can accept because I require both. I require you to keep what I've taught you. But I also require you to keep my commandments from your heart. Let your heart, meaning it's something that I have to decide to do. 
So we're just going to continue this vulnerability train. And I was like, okay, Lord, search my heart. What is it that may be preventing this highway, if you will, between my brain and my heart from like, what, what's the mismatch? You want another first one? Pride. Pride. You know what? This is something that I have to deal with about daily. It's the either, you know, it's it's the pride of life. It's wanting to be successful. It's being scared of how I'm perceived. It's fear of man. It's trying to do what God told me to do, but not doing it in a way that it makes people hate me because I'm still learning how to heal from old ancient wounds of rejection. And so trying to hold this tension, he said, but you're trying to hold the wrong tension. And if you would literally get some of these things out of the way, then you could do what I'm telling you to do the way that I'm telling you to do it. And you'd be way more effective for my kingdom. But do you want to see if you just keep reading, you'd see the other things that would come to you. If you can open up this highway pride. And then that was the first one. And he said offense. And so there's so many things that I was preparing and I was like, maybe we're going to talk about this. Maybe we're going to talk about this. And yet in worship today and in prayer in preparation, he was like, yeah, all of those things are on your mind. Cause I was, I was literally going to come and ask you for them because you were realizing that these are the things that are stopping you from communicating effectively with pride, offense, and there was one more. And the fact that I can't seem to remember it or recall it tells me he may not want me to say it. But if he brings it back to me and tells me I can share it, I totally will. But so if we don't forget his teaching, and see, that's a part of the Great Commission too. Jesus told his disciples, go into all nations and make disciples, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So do what he said, but let him live and transform your heart. So then it's not deceitful and wicked and that you can trust it because we can trust him. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. And so all of these things require getting him from being a head knowledge and down into your heart so that we're not, over here dealing with just straight up mental legalism and or we're not on the flip side of this on that pendulum thinking that oh because god is love yeah god is both god is love yes god is love god doesn't have love god is love but love without justice is not love at all love without truth is not truth at all and so um it's not love isn't patronizing love isn't people pleasing that's actually not love at all i don't know where that tangent came from either but praise the lord so then verse two it says for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you if if see they, they did this build if you are keeping what he taught you and keeping his commandments letting your heart keep his commandments let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake let not, here we go, that phrasing again, let not, meaning you get to choose, I get to choose, we get to choose whether or not steadfast love and faithfulness forsakes us, that's us, it's up to us, and how we do that first part determines how we do the rest, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, once again, he's telling us what to do, like, grace gives us the ability and the power to do these things, but we still have to follow the instruction, right? So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. I think that that right there is, we all, we're all kind of looking for that in some way, shape or form. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. And I heard, um, uh, heard somebody, a little clip somewhere, somehow in the past couple weeks, maybe. And he said something to the terms of, and it was about understanding. And it, it landed in a, in a really strange place, like in a very strangely good place. Don't get me wrong. Um, but he's, oh, Holy Spirit, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. It's 
something to the tune of that he had to release his um the way it landed on my heart is that i needed to release my entitlement to understand if i want to not get stuck on things that are related to my understanding i have to give up my right to understand this this thing that i feel like i should be able to decipher or understand or comprehend like it's god i can't and the sooner that i stop trying it'll probably be better for all of us do not lean on your understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path and i see i think this is something and i me 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 first y'all welcome again to the terry this is the lord talking to me teaching me in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will he will make straight your path and i think that this is one of those that i i'm like i know this is in here i can quote it and i'm like yes god make my path straight he's like well then let me in your heart let me in your heart like we've we've, we've got to stop trying to pick and choose and do what he's teaching us to do without doing all that he's teaching us to do and trying to do it halfway Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Y'all, there it is. That's, be not wise in your own eyes. Is that a semicolon? Yes. So how, okay, fine, Lord. How are we not wise in our own eyes? How do we not be wise in our own eyes? Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. If you're in a spot right now where you're trying to rationalize or justify patterns of sin in your life you are not fearing the lord and you are not turning from evil and this turning from evil this is repentance i saw something uh earlier maybe today maybe yesterday maybe last week i don't know i can't keep up the internet is wild and there's so many little social things and everybody's always spewing opinions and thoughts and stuff and my brain takes them and i don't know what to do with them half the time um and it was like you know this like dialogue you know it's like you know this person said this and this person said that well this person said you know to uh, christians to unbelievers like all you have to do is repent and you know and you're saved and then it's like those same people to christians if you don't repent you're going to hell like they were like then they were saying that there's like what's this disconnect between speaking to an unbeliever and speaking to someone who identifies as a Christian. But I have to tell you, I have to tell, I have to tell you this, okay? Because if you are identifying as a Christian and someone is like, what you're doing is jeopardizing your eternity, all they're doing is telling you that you ain't done the, the thing that we tell the unbeliever. You clearly haven't repented. You haven't turned from. You aren't fearing the Lord. And see, these two things, they go hand in hand to repent is to fear the lord if you don't fear the lord you're not going to repent and i don't mean like oh god don't strike me down but no a holy reverence and understanding that he is bigger and better and more more i don't want to say majestic but i do mean majesty so maybe it is majestic and new age just needs to get up off my adjectives because they don't have majestic only the living god has majestic but it's like y'all get it y'all get like you you if we're, well, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living god so maybe there is a fear component but what i understand fear of the lord is is a, a a a strong desire not to want to go places that he's not like guide me god because i've been I've lived a majority of my life outside of his will, his design, his way, all the things. You know what they led me to? Depression, anxiety, addictions, uh, perversions, prom uh, promiscuity. They have led me to sadness and uh, thoughts of suicide and um, all, all, everything bad that the, the world paints and put lipstick on a pig and says it's good. No, it ain't. It ain't. I never found not one thing that the devil promised me that he could give me. Not one. I didn't find joy. I didn't find acceptance. I didn't find happiness. I didn't find unconditional love. I didn't 
find the best friendships ever. I didn't find good quality people. I did not find anything. I didn't, I didn't find peace. I didn't find understanding. I found the opposite of all of that. And he still had the audacity to then blame everything that I didn't find on the people who knew the truth the whole time. I think I opened this bottle of water like six minutes ago, so excuse me. How are we doing? We're doing, we're doing all right. Well, we, we went longer than I thought he would. Praise God. So that's my take on Proverbs 3, 1 through 12, essentially. Well, I don't really think I went all the way through it. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. I'm going to just say that. And you know what? And there's a, a, you're experiencing infirmities of various kinds. May have a spiritual component to it. And so what this tells me right here in verse 7 is that fearing the Lord and turning away from evil can heal your flesh and refresh your bones. Like, that ain't exciting to y'all. I love that so much. So, hey, try that. Try that. Maybe it's the time for a search my heart, oh God. And guess what, God? Guess what, guys? He will reveal it to you. He will every single time. You know why? Quickly. Because he wants you healed, whole, and free way more than even you desire to be healed, whole, and free. Praise the Lord. Then he says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. And see this right here. Honor, honor the Lord with your wealth. Guys, okay. Once again. If we don't forget his teaching, but we keep his commandments with our heart and we don't lean on our own understanding and we don't forsake faithfulness and steadfast love, all of these things, it builds. It builds. We got to stop trying to go to the end and, and get the fruit without doing the steps to plant the seed in our own self. Oh, that was good. Are we going there? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not tonight, though. Okay. Well. Cultivate. We got to cultivate. We got to learn to cultivate people. That means like preparing. But we can cultivate the soul of our own hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. And so, mm, no, we're going to. There's a part of me that wants to go into the parable of the sower with a little experience from last week. But I'm a little nervous. But my heart is fluttering, and that usually is indicative of the Holy Spirit. So, do we go there? I got like 15 minutes, Lord. Okay, all right, all right. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all of your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. So he's saying that if you honor the Lord first, overflow comes. And I don't mean this in like a prosperity gospel, okay? Like you can just pray a big prayer and that's all you have to do and the Lord is guaranteed to answer you. Absolutely not. We can see in this, in the first 10 verses of Proverbs chapter 3, that there are things that foundationally need to be done and they need to be built upon. So it's not about doing one thing right, that you're not going to force God to move. Like you're not going to manipulate his hand in order to bless you, but because God is good in his nature, he never changes and he, he desires. He desires to pour out his goodness on his children. He desires to discipline his children. He desires these things. You can't manipulate him to move in your life, but you can obey and reap the fruit of that obedience. Now, motives matter. Let me say that. Because also, if we can go back to one on this one, if motives, mm, motives matter big time, because if you aren't keeping his commandments with your heart, if you are doing it from a place of selfish ambition, thank you, Holy Spirit, then you are not keeping his commandments with your heart. You are keeping his commandments with your motives, which are your mind. You're saying, okay, well, if I do this, 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 and this, then this will force God to do this, 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 and this, except spoiler alert, he's God, and so he knows your thoughts. So you may be able to trick you 
You may be able to trick your friends. You may be able to trick your pastors and all of the things, but the Lord knows the heart. The Lord knows your thoughts. And so, yeah, you can't, you can't. So if you're, if you are banking on whatever God to give you this, that, and the other, but you are only doing this, that, and the other so that he will do that. You got another thing coming to you and it's uh, a high risk of being deceived and falling for a counterfeit gospel. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for tying that all around to the whole theme of the podcast. We bless the Lord, identifying and calling it out. And that, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. When we try to do religious tasks from our mental and flesh and human understanding and we don't do that part where he says let your heart keep my commandment so i am in a holy spirit boot camp i guess just me and god because i'm like lord i need you to help me understand i need you to show me how to open up this highway this byway whatever from my head i want to get all the things that i know about you from my head down into my heart and I'll keep you posted. Prayerfully, it's going to be like this beautiful moment, but most likely it's going to be a process because that is how the Holy Spirit works. Most things are a process. There are instant moments of healing. Y'all know that, but so like in the Bible, you know, when Jesus was here and he was doing his ministry, we love to see a lot of people. There's a lot of stories, like the woman with the issue with blood. Great, she got healed. Uh, uh, Jairus' daughter brings her back. Lazarus brings her back to life. Uh, the leper, he was the he, one came back. Yeah, he healed all the ten. One came back, but so they had these uh, specific ailments. But y'all know that as much as we have proof and biblical records that say, okay, yeah, that person was healed, but it doesn't mean that if he heals you in one area that you never experience any kind of struggle, any other infirmity any other sickness any other disease any other um hard situation any other loss it doesn't say that it doesn't say that the woman with the issue of blood her issue of blood was healed we i'm getting choppy aren't I? maybe not i just saw a little spur thing but i feel like that's important for us to note and to to recognize and not let the enemy use that in our ear to say you know, well, God, yeah, he, you were delivered from this, but look at this that you're up against. Did God really heal you? Shut up, devil. Get behind me, Satan. I hate the devil. I hate him so much. Little gnat. Frustrates me. But yeah, so there's that. The Lord can heal that too. Just like I believe that the Lord is going to show me whatever it's like because I look in the denomination that I was raised in, legalism is kind of their thing. Okay. Um, and uh, I have a tendency to reverting to what I was originally taught, even if I don't mean to. And, uh, my pastor said yesterday that if you're not careful, you become the people who hurt you. And if I try and walk this out with just an intellect based relationship, that's first of all, you can't have a relationship without your heart. Oh, you did tell me. All right, real quick, and then I'm, I'm probably going to end with this. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the chat. We can talk about them in just a minute. I just want to share this with you because this was so cute. So, you know, like the devil, there's, there's a verse that says Satan, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? And a few weeks ago, the, uh, I was in prayer, and the Lord was like, he kind of gave me this breakdown. I talk too much, don't drink enough water, and so my lips are dry, sorry. Um, he gave me this breakdown, and he was like, this is what the devil does, but I need you to not be ignorant of his scheme. So, destroy destruction that's like the devil's end all be all john three sixteen says you know that uh, whosoever should not perish perish means uh utter destruction 
So destroy, steal, kill, destroy. That's what the devil does. The devil does. He wants to you to be destroyed eternally. Great. Fantastic. Well, I'm saved. That ain't, that ain't happening. Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for that. So now kill. And he was like, and you know that daggum devil done tried to do that as much as he possibly. I mean, literally 10 years old. End it now. Take yourself out. You, they wouldn't miss you. The world wouldn't care if you're here. Life would be easier without you. Nobody loves you anyway. Go ahead and do it. You know, just like all the things, you know, drive faster. Let go of the wheel. Pick that up. Boom, boom. Tie yourself up. Choke your, I, I mean, literally, my 20 some years, 20 some years of constant showing me pictures of how in the world I could end my life. So he's like, so yeah, you're very aware that the, the devil comes to kill and boy, you have seen him try. Great. But he's like, but this is the one, here's the thing, is I need you to understand how he steals. Because a lot of times I believe that when we read that verse, we're like, oh yeah, everybody knows it. Everybody knows what the, th what the devil comes to do. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But have you, have you stopped to consider what it is that he comes to steal besides your joy and your peace? You know, we, we, I hear people say that, but better yet, how? How does he do it? And I think a lot of times we consider, I don't know about you. Okay, let me, let me speak for me. I can't speak for you. So, you know that like, in the movies and a TV show, or maybe unfortunately you've, you've came home and your house has been ransacked. And so your front door, before you even walk through it, you can see that someone's like busted it down. Right. And so you walk in, you're like, oh, I've been robbed. Right. And the devil, I mean, and then the Lord in that day in prayer, he was like, yeah, the devil's he's, he's more, he's more discreet than that. He said, so what he does is he comes in to your life. And he starts by taking things that you won't even notice is gone. So you know how some people like steal your identity. They steal your debit card number. Well, they, they test it with little amounts here and there that somebody probably wouldn't notice unless they have like Hawkeyes on their account. And they just test to see, is it valid? And they do something that they wouldn't miss, right? Because if you if they just went straight away and just gutted you out, guess what? You're gonna be canceling stuff so quick. And so this idea of being ransacked or just something cleaning out your accounts all at one time, he's like, I feel like that's how you think the devil steals, but I need you to be um, not ignorant to the way that he comes to steal, Terry. And he steals through little tiny things. It's the tiny foxes that spoil the vineyard. And so for me, my own experience and testimony, he was like, the devil comes to, to steal by saying, oh, it's okay if you listen to that playlist, or it's okay if you watch this show. It's not even bad. It doesn't even have, you know, it's just, it's just PG-13. It's just a little hardly nudity. It's just a love story. You know, it's, it's, it's not even bad. Uh, so I turn it on, right? And, and without even realizing it, he's taking something that I, I don't think I need. There's a, there's, he takes a little bit of my purity. He takes a little bit of my discipline. He takes a, a little bit of something that I won't know that I'm missing for a long time until one day he's come and he's taken so much of it that it's gone. And he was like, because here's the thing is I need you to understand that he doesn't just come in like a thief that you never met. He acts like a friend. And he comes in and he robs you blind little by little. And so for me, it's like he started when you were a kid and he came to steal your innocence. And then he continued by what you like to watch, what you like to listen to, the, the people you like to hang around, the places you like to go when you got older. You let him steal a little here and a little there, and a little more there, and a little more here, until you were so disrupted in your mind that you had a whole nother identity that you didn't even plan on having because you wouldn't, you wouldn't have become that if you would have been whole. But I wasn't whole anymore because he had come and he had stolen little by little until there was not even enough of me left for me to identify with.
And so just, I encourage you to ask the Lord this week. Lord, identify places where the devil has is, is, is been stealing from me, and I don't even notice. Because he steals to the point, and then to where then when you uh, happen upon the realization that you have been robbed blind, that you want to die, essentially. And if you are so busy chasing the little foxes, there's a good chance you weren't abiding in this, which means that the stealing leads to kill, literally leads to you being killed and then leads to your destruction. And so it is a, it's, it's, he's more sneaky dickens than that, you guys. And so be encouraged. And I, I do, I encourage you with that to say, hey, Lord, identify, <laughs> let the Lord be life lock for you this week. Lord, identify places that I'm being robbed and maybe I don't even notice it so that you can get back the pieces of you that are rightfully you. All right, great. Well, I did not know what we were going to talk about today, and I'm trying to uh, recall what we talked about. And besides that first verse in Proverbs chapter three, I don't actually know. I don't know what I said. So I bless, I praise. Well, I bless the Lord for giving me words because I've been talking for nearly an hour. So clearly, He said something. Now we just pray that His oil is on it, and that it goes forth, and it does what only His word can do. I read through some journals from last year and some previous years today because I saw something and I felt like uh, I was instructed to listen to what the Lord had told me in the wilderness. And I ain't gonna lie, I got sidetracked with some of the painful stuff and that probably contributed to uh, the warfare that I experienced today. But there was two things that really stuck out to me this evening or today. And I want to share with whoever this is for. I don't know. Um, but I feel like for somebody, there are some things that you need to accept. Maybe situations that have changed, relationships that have changed, and you're finding it very difficult to move forward and to move on because it just doesn't make sense whether the character doesn't line up or somebody just surprised you in a way that you never saw coming. But I encourage you that whatever has happened, accept that it's happened and that it's time to completely release all offense and move on. And being offended being offended clouds connections with other people. Being offended clouds your conviction from the Lord. Being offended robs you of joy. Being offended will cause you to compare. And when you compare, that's even more joy that, that comes and gets robbed. And so uh, offense and being offended literally breeds pride. So, you know, I don't have any problem standing in front of you and telling you all the 99 million ways that I have messed up in my life because I've made a lot of mistakes. And if the best thing that can come from them is a little lived out wisdom and a whole lot of wisdom from the Lord and the audacity and boldness to share my mistakes with you, praise God, if you learn something, that's beautiful. But I just want to encourage you that if you are offended or you are living in a place of offense, one, this may be something that is stopping you from being able to let whatever's in your mind fall down into your heart. But I want to encourage you that things are different now. 
like it or not, whether you would have chose it or not, things are different now. And I encourage you to look for the good that is new instead of searching for what was or what used to be. Because your joy is not going to be found in a replication of what you used to have. God is doing something new. Don't you perceive it? And so don't miss what is good in the new. Because you're so taken back by the change that's happened around you. You have a whole life. You have a whole life waiting to be lived that you don't even know what it's like. And do not let fear create a mental prison for you and say, well, it's not going to be as good as that. No, it will be better than your Egypt. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. There is nothing that is that he's pulled you out of that can even compare to where he'll take you if you let him lead you to that place. So, I bless the Lord. I thank you, Father. I, I, I pray that you let this go forth and to do what only you can do, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for these people. I thank you for this stream. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And I thank you, most of all, for showing up. I thank you that you are faithful. I thank you that you are loving and that you are kind and that I can depend on you to show up where you were invited into. So, Father, I just pray blessings over every single one of these people that are on this stream right now that have been on it and that hopped off and that will watch it at on replay or however, Lord, I just pray that you pour out blessings on them in a major way, Lord. Give them peace. Give them strength. Lord, I pray that you give them the best rest that they have had in months tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Frankie said, I noticed the anchor tattoo you have and felt the Lord saying, my love is the anchor you can hold on to. You know what it says, Frankie, with the anchor? It says, oh, hold on. Get on the screen. Beep. It says the anchor holds in spite of the storm. So, yes, absolutely. Secondly, I heard the quote, high tide, low tide, always by your side. Come on. All right, fam. Y'all got any questions? You got any comments, concerns? Prayer requests? Praise reports? Come on, tell me something good. Holy Spirit has done it again. Praise the Lord. All right. So we've been here for an hour and a little bit. So if y'all don't have anything else, I pray y'all have an incredible week. I will see y'all next week, next Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here, same time, same place. Be blessed, y'all. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.